Hello, everybody. So, this is going to be um, my video on just mushroom growth promoting bacteria in general, kind of reviewing some other information out there as compared to my doctor, Mike Trial, which I don't really feel like the product did much for me. But, um,. Um, it's not to say that the mushroom growth promoting bacteria are not a phenomena in the fungi realm. I kind of wanted to go over some scientific articles that I feel kind of like might even play into my experience. So, I don't know, we'll just kind of go through these. These are just different things that I've read over time researching uh, the bacterias or just uh, the phenomena in general. I suppose not any of the bacteria specifically, although we could get into that in a minute. So you Google mushroom growth promoting bacteria and several articles come up. Um, mushroom growth promoter, I found this article talking about feeding oyster mushrooms to chicken. Um, chickens uh, increase their immunity. Kind of an interesting article. Anyway, um, some of the stuff I found, however, like this study right here. So it was done on Agaricus blasii, blasii um, I believe, and I'll leave links to all these articles in the videos, and um, I don't know how much I wanted to get into each article specifically because some of them are fairly lengthy some of them are actually just introductions that i would have had to pay for um so they were growing different bacterias and uh comparing their effects on mycelial growth different um contents of the substrate at different periods of time uh, they said it reduced the time to harvest by 26 days now looking at okay 40 to 50 days from spawning so that is a long fruiter uh, it says right here, the fruiting phase will last three to four months. Basically, this is a long fruiting mushroom. That uh, was my whole thing on here. I can't recall specifically uh, how they justified their yield um, of an increase up to 250%. So I don't know if that had to do with time or if it was actual way over the entire period. It is a uh, pretty lengthy article. I will link it. I didn't want to spend too much time uh, digging into these guys. I suggest um, anybody who's really interested at least skim through these uh, articles. Regarding mushroom yield in the first flush, inoculation of all seven isolates individually exhibited significant increase in total fresh yields ranging from 170 to 215% of the non-inoculated control. Again, this result does not correlate with promotion of mycelium growth as others reported in, in another report. Cited here, it is interesting to note that P. putita was the best suited growth promoting inoculant. I think that this, uh, I think that's a uh, Pseudomonas bacteria, if I recall, um, for increasing by sporous yield. However, in a previous report of inoculation of Pseudomonas and Pseudomonas did not improve blazy eye. Another study saying it didn't improve it. Um, and a lot of these articles have really good uh, citations. Uh, like all this information has a lot of uh, great info in it. Having to do with mushroom growth promoters and fungi, most of them um, 
Agaricus, you can see here, um, the first one was actually Ostiatus, um, but Agaricus, Agaricus Blasii, Agaricus Bisporus, so, Conclusion, they seem to think that this was a predominant bacteria. Mushroom growth promoting bacteria isolates significantly reduce time to harvest, increase fresh mushroom yield, and polysaccharide protein complex. Um, and again, real quick, I wanted to see what is their substrate. They were using a casein soil. Okay. Either way, I know it's not sawdust. That was my whole point. It's agaricus. It's not sawdust. It's probably compost. I can't find it right now. I should have had better notes. Um, if I'm wrong, I'd be happy to correct that in the video. It's, uh, it's not sawdust. That's my whole point there. Um, probably compost. If I'm wrong, I would go back and edit this. Uh, I've read it a couple times. I should have made notes. I suggest people uh, read this on their own. Let's go to another article. Uh, I th thought this was funny. This is a article from like the 90s talking about how to use soybean fats as a mushroom growth promoter. I thought that was interesting. Okay. Growth promoter spray, improve yield, and white button mushrooms. Another old article. I remember I uh, had these right here just to kind of show some older information on mushroom growth promoters. Several trials on the use of indole butric acid. Yes. I <laughs> uh, thought that was interesting. Okay, you guys. So let's... Um, what are we getting to? Okay, I'm just trying to really build up to the the bacteria information, even though that first article was kind of interesting. It was one of the first things that if you Google um, mushroom group promoting bacteria, that article, the first one, the Blasii, I think was actually published in 22 or 21. Um, primary versus secondary composers. This is another thing that I think people should be familiar with when looking into a mushroom growth promoting bacteria. I'm not going to keep reading through this stuff. and uh, You guys can do this on your own time. I already feel like I've done too much uh, reading on here and scrolling and all that stuff. This isn't really my uh, forte. So I'm just going to try to keep pushing through to the meat of it. Um, evaluation of indigenous potent mushroom growth promoting bacteria. Okay, now we're getting into like more, more stuff. This was uh, 2012. So we see MGP B on the board. And again, Agaricus by Sporus. Um, Okay, yes. Yeah, because that article was actually much older. This was uh, referenced actually in that other article talking about the isolated bacteria um, from a pleurotus strain, I believe, from the mycelial surface of a pleurotus strain. Uh, Their conclusion results of this research strongly suggest that inoculation of a mycelium with specific bacteria may have beneficial applications for mushroom productions. So they do list um, some of the bacteria here. Here we see Putita. Can't specifically recall. Um, a few of the names, I think somebody in the shroomery was talking about some of that also. Um, I was looking primarily for Pleurotus, other Pleurotus references, 
uh, I don't believe there really are such besides the ear and guy one that we will get out to in just a minute. Um, I wonder where we're at. Do, do, do. Okay. Just wanted to kind of show you guys the summary. Oh, this one is an overview. This is uh, another Garricus overview that showed it helps solubilize, solubilize phosphorus. Um, this again, we see Petita. They isolated several strains. Basically, finally, two strains. Right here, right there, showing the highest increase in production were characterized as Putita. Okay, but like molecular methods identified as growth promoting inoculants, increasing mushroom yield. It doesn't give us any specific numbers here, but again, I would know it is uh, agaricus. And their substrates are much different than. Um, you know, most people substrate. Simple as that, unless you're going on compost. Keep it pushing. Okay. Okay. That's right. And again, that's kind of why I was looking for um, more Pleurotus research, because a lot of these articles you do have to pay for. Uh, I just can't afford to be downloading articles, every article that I want to. However, reading through this abstract, promotion of mushroom growth by means of biological agents replacing chemicals is an emerging and highly demanding issue in the sector of mushroom cropping. Uh, so basically replacing chemicals, chemical fertilizers and whatnot. The present study was aimed to search for a novel bacterium potentially able to enhance mushroom growth and yield. A total of 2,165 bacteria isolates purified from different samples were scrutinized through various growth promoting attributes. As a consequence of rigorous screening, 26 isolates found exhibiting positive traits of mushroom growth promotion. Thereafter, in response to the co-cultivation, fungus and bacteria, potent bacterial strain was isolated, capable of improved significantly in mycelial growth. In uh, notice they said strain here. Uh, the last article noted two very specific strains of bacteria. Not just uh, the species of bacteria, but the strain of bacteria. In co-cultivation, the highest radial and linear growth rate was 7.1 and 8.1 millimeters a day on 10 and 11. I swear I saw this uh, study free somewhere. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, the fruit body yields and biological efficiency of the inoculated sets were 28% and 58% higher than the uninoculated control sets. The bacterium was molecularly identified based on 16S ribosomal RNA sequencing and confirmed as a glutamic bacterial, I can't pronounce that one. MRC-119, and therefore the bio-inoculant of the current bacterium can be potentially, potentially useful as an eco-friendly substitute, stimulating the production of mushroom fruit bodies with improved BE. Potentially. Again, potentially on agaricus. Oh no, we're talking about pleurotus here. Okay. Yes, yes we are. Um, and then again here, it sounds like, what they say, 26 isolates. Thereafter, in response to the cold cultivation, a potent one, it sounds like one single bacteria strain was isolated. So, maybe this article is worth reading if you are... Uh, doing oyster mushrooms and even then again it's gonna have a lot to do with your substrate I'm sure uh, who knows maybe I will buy this article maybe if somebody else wants to buy this article and see if there's a or is this a whole book it could be a whole book no it's a research paper um, if anybody's interested in taking deeper in that 
feel free to. Um, I'd love to see some information on Pleurotus. We do have this. I think this was the one and only uh, relative species, I would say, to most people. I can't find anything besides this for free on Pleurotus, uh, Edotes, um, Erinaceus, Lucidum, you know, like some of the most commonly cultivated uh, strains besides Agaricus. Um, but if we look at this one done on Irigai, I really suggest that everybody reads this one because this may be the most relative one. I do believe they did this on Sawdust and maybe Wheat Brand. Kind of what they did here, you get your introduction of the experiment, which is uh, the mushroom growth promoting bacteria. They cultured it on uh, agar and maybe a liquid culture. They got their strain from some lab in China. Um, Okay, the substrate they use consisted of 25% sawdust, 27 corn cob, 13% bagus, 15% bran, bean pulp, corn starch, calcium carbonate. What is that? Um, sugar cane pulp, that's right. Okay. So that mixture right there is already far more similar to most people's cultivation style, at least for gourmet production, than uh, just compost. And you know, if you're doing, like you're just spawning grains to straw or something like that, I really, I just, I mean, there's no research on that really. So, but we'll just keep going. Um, and then they do a lot of sequencing and purification of the myceliums and bacterias to ensure what they're looking at. And they uh, grow it out in broths. They're doing a lot of uh, bacterial comparisons. Um, so essentially the hyphae was treated with the bacterial broths and uh, they may have even been co-cultured and they did comparisons in agar and the bottom one is with the broth added and the top one is a control so it does seem to have uh, helped the mycelial growth here A lot of other information on mycelial effects and enzyme production. Um, recalling, do they even say anything about? Yes. Uh, maybe not. Uh, the actual fruit body yield. This study seemed to be more on mycelial. Uh, reactivity as well as like enzymatic and um, molecular activity I think would be the word yes so it's an interesting read again still not like super uh, farm oriented the study on the composition and dynamics of bacterial communities can 
during Pleurotus eringi cultivation and growth promotion ability of isolated bacteria will provide an important theoretical basis for a deeper understanding of bacteria-fungi interactions, which will also make mushroom science research richer and support the development of medium-term and long-term strategies to increase both profitability and the greening of the industry. So, just kind of absorb that in even. Uh, and like the guy mentioned in his video, uh, what we're seeing is uh, extracellular metabolites were mainly classified into N antagonistic substances promoting materials and cyclopeptides. The cyclopeptides in the cell free fermentation broth of the bacterial increase bacterial broth increase nitrogen supply, thus decrease carbon to nitrogen ratio in the growth substrate, which stimulated two extracellular enzymatic secretions and activities. I mean, if you can take a moment to like decode that, that is the gist of what these things are doing. And how every strain and species is going to react to that. <clears throat> And also to the efficiency and different depths of which bacterial strains can uh, make that occur are going to be uh, two of the biggest factors, I believe, in the whole mushroom growth promoting bacteria realm. Um, found another article, Beneficial Interactions Between Bacteria and Edible Mushrooms. Again, this is a, a button study. Let's see, this one was done in March 22 as well. So, I mean, it's new, but... Bacteria present in the substrate impact mushroom cultivation in both positive and negative ways. Uh, this is a good article. Kind of helps you understand the bacteria. Again, I can't really, there's no point for me to sit here and read through these long articles for you. They will be linked. Uh, I've read them through. Uh, they've done nothing but bring more questions. Um, if I was a button grower, then yeah. This was a good article because it talks about bacterial diversity and compost casing on mushrooms. Again, in Agaricus. So, my point being, uh, it's just not relevant to most of us. However, we will, uh, again... Some of the some of the volatile organic compounds that are produced by Agaricus inhibit primordia formation, of which one octin three O has the strongest effect. Biosynthesis of this volatile, also known as mushroom alcohol, by mushroom forming fungi is still unclear. Uh, it is produced from linoleic acid via the intermediate hyperoxy fatty acid um, inhibition of primordium formation is also observed when one octan thriol is added to the airstream to which avaporous colonized compost and casings is exposed once one o three o is excluded from the airstream mushroom production is initiated again this Volatile organic compound would control early differentiation from vegetative hyphenates and acid hyphenates. Do, 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 do. Pseudomonads in the casing are able to metabolize that. Uh, 
about black material blotch. Here they say, uh, while various sumonads cause blotch, uh, other species can control these pathogens. Uh, interesting read. And, uh, you know, another fair perspective is that you know, agaricus is the most researched because it is the most grown. But it is also fair to say that the way it is grown is far different than uh, most wood-loving species. Here they're talking about dry bubble, penicillin, fungicola. I thought that was verticillin fungicola. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, and here they point out that uh, it can inhibit germination of uh, fungal spores in some cases. I guess, uh, reviewing the conclusion. And most of our understanding on the positive interactions between bacteria and edible mushroom comes from studies on a limited number of bacterial species and mushrooms. Studying other bacteria from microbial communities during cultivation of diverse edible mushrooms is expected to lead to various microbes that can be used to promote vegetative growth and mushroom formation. Moreover, understanding the mechanisms behind positive interactions may help to identify new strains as well as lead to development supplements that can be added during cultivation. So, for anybody who's interested, uh, I mean, it's it's all here, the things that I've been reading, and it's a lot less definitive than I would hope. I mean, I'd love to see some good information, somebody coming out and uh, sharing some stuff also hope that this kind of encourages just that. Um, again, another study on Blasii. Uh, this was actually just uh, the same study we looked at earlier from another poster, actually. Um, another study on bacteria and fungi, 2019. So it kind of just goes over general bacterial fungi relationships in the beginning I was talking about truffles and stuff even the study and understanding of the mushroom microbiome transcriptome along the crop cycle could represent a step forward and to highlight specific roles of bacteria during different stages of crop development and therefore optimize the application timing for bioinoculants. In this sense, the selection of MGP and biocontrol agents and their introduction on casing as single colonies or syncoms by mimicking the native microbiota required for mushroom fruit fructification and development is a potential tool and an opportunity to design alternative casing materials for the industry in spite of the limited number of biocontrol agents to control mushroom parasites and crop selection and application of new active strains together with programs of mushroom breeding or training topics to achieve replacement for the broadly employed chemical pesticide. Wow. Okay. So, last but not least, I turned to the shroomery for uh, some information because there was one article that I came across um, talking about a, a biofungicide, I suppose. Somebody said that you can buy the uh, 
bacteria is here, um, get them at a much larger rate, and they do have them individually. You can find these uh, on their own. And these guys were even talking about uh, culturing them yourself. Yeah, I mean, just looking for uh, any information. Oh, that's what we were just looking at. That's funny. Yeah, okay. So I'll uh, go ahead and link everything that we looked at. Um, I just don't know what to say that the articles can't and I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I'm a scientist either because a lot of the information uh, especially when they get into sequencing and like a lot of the uh, chemical chemical elements involved uh, you, you definitely need a bit of a chemistry background to understand it completely um, but you could go through you could read the conclusions uh, I guess all I can say is that most of the information is done on a Garricus and a lot of the uh, information done on others is limited as well as um, the strains sound like they are pretty particular um, where they were isolated and it's not just like you know, necessarily any Putita strain or, you know, any just whatever it, um, these labs potentially isolated them even off of, uh, like that one study isolated a bacteria directly off of the mycelial surface. So who knows what they're doing, uh, with that said and where exactly you might get this, the perfect, uh, strain. Do I think people should still try stuff out? I mean, yeah, why not? Uh, I'd like to see some more uh, well-documented home grows. Uh, if you've got it, if you're out there using these products, feel free to share with uh, people how they do yet, even if... Uh, you aren't doing on that big of a scale or something. If you just got a few blocks or something, or a tub or two, or whatever you're doing, uh, do a side-by-side, -side, but just make sure that you weigh everything before, and you're trying to account for as many variables as you can if you want uh, anybody to actually be able to find any value from it. So, with all that said, and the links available, uh, I just wanted to those for you guys and let you into a glimpse of my research if anybody wants to share some of their information they found or some of the um, some of their experiences I'd be happy to help spread that as well so until next time guys thanks